Hey guys, I'm Oliver with Motion Ray, and today you're going to learn how to create the Ken Burns effect inside Final Cut Pro. The Ken Burns effect is a simple way to add movement to your shots, and can be used on so many different types of shots, including both video and photo. The effect gets its name after the famed American documentary filmmaker, Ken Burns, who's well known for his use of archival photographs and footage in his films. He'd use this effect to bring motion to still images. You may not have heard of the technique, but you will have seen it used across a range of different videos to add movement to still images. We're going to start by applying this effect to an image on our timeline. It's important to note at this point that however you set your Ken Burns effect, it will apply to the whole duration rather than starting or ending wherever your playhead is. To access the effect, select the clip or image you want to apply the effect to, and then hit the transform icon menu drop down. Hit the crop icon, and you should see a change in your viewing window to give you some more controls. You can also access cropping by hitting shift C. You'll notice we now have three options in the viewer window, trim, crop, and Ken Burns. We're going to begin by selecting Ken Burns and adjusting the start point of our clip where we want the animation to begin. You can do this by clicking any of the four corners of the green box in the viewer and dragging to increase or decrease the scale. We're going to start wide, so that means increasing the scale to the outside of the viewer window. Once you're happy with your start positioning, click on the red box to adjust your end scale and positioning. You can also hold down command to stop the boxes from snapping to the edge of the frame. And to test out your effect, hit the preview button in the top left. Once you're happy with your effect, hit done in the top right. Now there may be times that you created the Ken Burns effect, but you accidentally wanted it in reverse. No worries, because you can open the Ken Burns effect again and hit the swap icon in the top left to reverse the start and end scale. This will make the animation appear in reverse. Since the Ken Burns effect applies to the whole clip or image, you can also increase or decrease the duration of the effect by increasing or decreasing the length of the footage. Now that you've learned how to apply the Ken Burns effect for a zoom in and zoom out, let's go through another cool application for the Ken Burns effect, which is to pan from the left to the right, or the right to the left. With the Ken Burns effect added, scale down your green box and position to the left or the right, depending on which way you want to pan. Now do the same with the red box, ensuring you maintain the same scale as the green box and position on the opposite side of the frame. Then of course hit preview to see the image with the panning effect. And if you want to reverse the movement, you know what to do. Hit the swap icon and then click done. And if you add multiple clips or images to your timeline, you can create a simple but cool montage by applying the effect to each clip individually. And there you have it. You just learned how to create the Ken Burns effect inside Final Cut Pro and a number of applications for it. So guys, that's it for me. And I hope you found this tutorial on how to use the Ken Burns effect helpful. And feel free to check out all of our awesome Final Cut Pro templates, transitions, effects, stock footage, and more we have to offer at Motion Array. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.